If you're a fan of Greek philosophy or Marvel series on Disney+, Plus, then you're familiar with The Ship of Theseus. You are familiar with the thought experiment The Ship of Theseus in the field of identity metaphysics. Naturally. Legend has it that Theseus, the mythical king of Athens, saved the children of Athens from King Minos, and then fled over sea to Delos. Every year after that, Athenians would commemorate this legend by taking that same ship on a pilgrimage to Delos. In order to maintain this tradition for centuries, the ship required a lot of maintenance. Every year, they would replace old, worn-out parts with shiny new ones. Eventually, a question was raised by ancient philosophers. If every piece of the original ship had now been replaced by a new one, was this ship still the ship of Theseus? Or was it something new entirely? Unfortunately, this is a question without a definitive answer. But I think we can at least narrow it down a little bit. Let's take a similar but easier example, say a knife. You could swap out a wooden handle for a metal one and it would still be a knife. If you took away the blade, however, then it wouldn't. Therefore, the blade is an essential property of a knife. It can't be one without it. Now this example is a lot easier because we're just talking about a knife in general and not someone's specific instance of a knife like we saw with Theseus. But it does show us that one possible way of solving this puzzle would be to identify the essential properties of the ship of Theseus. If they still remain even hundreds of years later, then it's still the same ship. And if they don't, then it isn't. Of course, the tricky part now is figuring out what are the essential properties of the ship? What is it that makes the ship of Theseus the ship of Theseus? The impossible question at the heart of the problem. So what does this have to do with Ted Evelyn Mosby. We'll get to that in just one second. We live in an era of sequels and reboots, and just like how the ship of Theseus needed to be fixed up before every voyage, the same happens to these long-running franchises every time there's a new entry in them. So when small changes start to add up over time, or when one sweeping change is made for a total reboot, I start to wonder, is this still the same franchise, or is it just something new? For example, one of the biggest franchises ever, Star Wars, which was created by George Lucas and first hit movie theaters in 1978, but was bought out by Disney to be rebooted with 2015's The Force Awakens. With George Lucas no longer involved in all new main cast and a brand new story, is this still Star Wars? You could probably argue both sides, but I'd bet that most fans do accept this reboot as a Star Wars movie. Say what you will about the quality of it, but you have to admit that it does at least feel like Star Wars. And that's because it includes those essential properties like we talked about earlier. I'm no Star Wars expert, but it seems to me like some of the essential properties of a Star Wars movie are an oppressive government, a planet-sized weapon, a main character whose parents, I guess, need to be special, a score by John Williams, and of course, those amazing PowerPoint transitions. I'm simplifying a bit here, but you get the point. When you're rebooting a franchise, of course you'll want to shake some things up, but it's important that the essence of it remains intact. After all, if the reboot or sequel is going to feel nothing like the original, then what's the point? Now, there's a million different series or movies that I could put on the chopping block for this video. But today I wanted to look at the reboot of one of my all-time favorite sitcoms, How I Met Your Mother. The story of one Ted Mosby and his epic search for a soulmate. The show had a nine season run and ended in 2013. In 2022, however, the show was rebooted, this time with the title How I Met Your Father, telling the similar story of one Sophie Tompkins and her epic search for a soulmate. And as an avid fan of both Greek philosophy and How I Met Your Mother, after finishing the first season of the reboot, I asked myself a question I was hoping I wouldn't have to. Is this still How I Met Your Mother, or is it something new entirely? Of course, it is a reboot, so some changes are to be expected, but has it been changed so much that it doesn't even feel like How I Met Your Mother? In this video, that is the question we'll be taking on. What is the essence of How I Met Your Mother, and is it captured in the reboot? Like I mentioned, How I Met Your Mother is one of my favorite shows ever, and I've watched it from pilot to finale so many times I've lost count. As we're gonna dive into, I just feel like it's so much more ambitious than your average sitcom, and that's why it's one of the only ones I continue to come back to. So if you're gonna reboot this thing, you gotta do it right. As a quick disclaimer, we'll only be taking into account the first season of How I Met Your Father for this video. You might argue that it took How I Met Your Mother nine seasons to create its identity, so it would be unfair to compare it to a singular season of How I Met Your Father. But remember that this is a reboot, as in it's already building off of the established identity of the franchise. So it's not like they were starting from scratch like they did with How I Met Your Mother in 2006. Plus, you'll see
see that a lot of the examples from How I Met Your Mother that I'm going to use are from season one anyway. Regardless of how How I Met Your Father changes in future seasons, this video will still serve as a case study in how to reboot a franchise. Oh, and I think it goes without saying, but just in case it doesn't, spoiler alert for all nine seasons of How I Met Your Mother and season one of How I Met Your Father. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at what I think are the essential properties of How I Met Your Mother to see if they exist in the reboot. How I Met Your Mother is all about stories. At the top level, the entire show is a story that future Ted is telling to his kids. But one of the show's signature moves is to tell stories within that story. For a great example of this, look no further than literally the very first episode. In this episode, Ted is going on his first date with Robin. And instead of just showing us how the date goes, plain and simple, we actually get the story piece by piece, as Ted tells Marshall and Lily about it later that night. So as Ted tells them what happened, we're seeing it play out on screen. And every once in a while, we cut forward to the present where Marshall and Lily will make some jokes about how dumb Ted is or something, and then we jump back to the story. There's even a part after Ted tells Robin that he loves her at the end of that first date where we see the actual event play out. I think I'm in love with you. Then jump up a layer to see the gang's reaction to the story later at the bar. What? Then we jump up one more layer to see future Ted's kids' reaction. What? Then we go all the way back down to the bottom to see Robin's reaction in the actual moment. What? And if you think this is complicated, just you wait. Because when the show really gets going, I swear it's like you're watching a Christopher Nolan movie. I cannot tell you just how much I love the way stories are told on this show. It can turn even the most plain and boring stories into something interesting. And it also allows for the characters to give commentary on what's going on while it happens. Kind of similar to something like those talking heads from The Office. Without this format, you wouldn't be able to press pause and inject those jokes into the moment. And it also allows for the show to tell parts of a story out of order. I just mentioned that moment from the first episode, but it gets way more ridiculous. Some episodes are told in reverse, like the one where Ted misses a flight, and him and Robin slowly remember the events leading up to that day to try and figure out what actually caused him to be so late to the airport. At first, we learn he was late to the airport because he had a court order that morning. Then we learn that he had the court order because he jumped a turnstile to get Barney out of the subway. Then we learn that the reason Barney was stuck in the subway was because he had just run a marathon that he wasn't prepared for. We then go even further back to see that the reason Barney was running the marathon in the first place was to take Marshall's place who got injured at the last second, and so on. Like I said, a story told in reverse. Or how about the episode where Lily and Marshall are having a housewarming party? And instead of the story being told chronologically, it's actually told room by room. That is, we see everything that happened in the living room, then we rewind time to see everything that happened in the dining room, and then once again for the kitchen. Now, why on God's green earth would this be the most effective way for old man Ted to tell this story to his kids? I have no idea, but it's certainly fun to watch. Storytelling is a part of How I Met Your Mother's DNA. In other words, this is one of the essential properties of the show, in my opinion. So is this type of storytelling present in How I Met Your Father? Not really but kind of. The whole show does still take on the format of a parent telling their kids stories. And the first episode starts off strong with Sophie in a cab with Jesse and Sid as she tells them some stories from her dating life. Pretty basic stuff, but it does still have the essence of How I Met Your Mother. Unfortunately, even moments like this, which are kind of just the bare minimum for me, are few and far in between. We do get some basic flashbacks pretty frequently, but they play out more like a Family Guy style cutaway and less like an actual part of the story. You mean look at pictures of Ian while listening to Drops of Jupiter on loop like you do every time things don't work out with a guy? Tell me, did the wind sweep you off your feet? But getting back to the pilot, Sophie accidentally leaves her phone in Jesse's cab, and then she's off to her first date with Ian. Later on, she gets home and tells her roommate Valentina all about it. Mind you, all of this is being told in chronological order. As you can see, future Sophie is much more straightforward than future Ted was. I think the best way to tell the story is by starting at the end, briefly, then going back to the beginning, and then periodically returning to the end, maybe giving different characters' perspectives throughout. 
Just to you know, give it a bit of dynamism, otherwise it's just sort of a linear story. Just yeah. tell us what happened. So while there still is some storytelling in How I Met Your Father, I wouldn't say that it's anything notable. For example, if I was making another video breaking down the essential properties of How I Met Your Father, the storytelling would probably not make the list. And this comes at the cost of everything I mentioned earlier. We don't get to see the characters break down their stories in real time, and we don't experience the story in any fun, non-linear way. Instead, what we get is basic sitcom storytelling. If I had to give this first episode more of a How I Met Your Mother vibe just off the top of my head, all you'd have to do is rearrange the story a little bit. Instead of starting it at the beginning like any boring old sitcom would, let's start it at the middle, with Sophie coming home from her date to tell Valentina about it. And as she tells the story, you can show it on screen. From there, you go back to the present to show Sophie realizing that she lost her phone. Then you bounce back to even before the date with Ian to show how she lost her phone, in the cab with Jesse and Sid on her way there. And then the episode finally ends with all the different stories linking up and Sophie making a grand romantic gesture at the airport. Now that is how I met your mother. Moving on, the storytelling format is what makes room for the next essential property that I wanted to cover. Have you ever been reminiscing about something with some friends only to discover that you guys remember the same event very differently? Well, that idea is front and center in How I Met Your Mother. Take this story of Ted, Barney, and Honey at the bar one night. When Ted tells the story of that night, Honey is extremely interested in him. But when Barney tells the story of that same night from his perspective, Honey couldn't be less interested in Ted, and he's the one that she really wants to get with. So we see the scene play out twice in this episode, once told by Ted and the other told by Barney. Same story, different perspectives. Another good example of this is from yet another episode where Ted professes his love to Robin. I love you, Robin. <laughs> Classic Mosby. But unfortunately, directly after this, Robin has to go on a week-long work trip, so they don't really have any time to talk about Ted's confession. But before she leaves, Robin does this. I'll continue this when I get back. And later on, when Ted is telling Marshall and Lily about what happened, he tells the story like this. We'll continue this when I get back. <laughs> Showing that from his point of view, Robin seemed excited to get back home and possibly start up their relationship again. But then Lily asks, Are you sure that it wasn't... We'll continue this when I get back. Okay. <laughs> Suggesting that maybe Ted's perspective was skewed from reality, which it probably was. Notice how Robin's line was exactly the same the three times we saw it. It was just delivered differently. So does How I Met Your Father have a habit of playing with perspective? Well, unfortunately, this one is kind of an extension of the storytelling that we already talked about. And since there's not a lot of that in How I Met Your Father, there's not a lot of funny perspective stuff either. But it's not completely absent. Even though the characters within the story don't tell a lot of stories, we do still have the main story being told by future Sophie that does play a little bit with her perspective. For example, in the episode where Sophie and Jesse go to the dentist, future Sophie says that even though this dentist was probably not that old in reality, she remembers him as being almost ancient. So he's presented like this on screen. This is almost just like an episode of How I Met Your Mother where Robin is dating an older man. Even though he's only 41, Ted remembers him as being much older than that, presumably because he was just looking for flaws in Robin's new boyfriend. And so even though he actually looked like this, Ted remembers him as looking like this. So I was happy to see that they hadn't forgotten about this entirely in How I Met Your Father, but just like with the storytelling, examples of this are not super common. So let's move on to our third and final essential property of How I Met Your Mother. For the nine seasons of the show, Old Man Ted is supposedly telling his kids the story of how he met their mother. But after it's all been said and done, I think it's pretty clear that it was about much more than that all along. After all, we don't even meet the mother until the final season of the show. Ted shows his kids that there's a number of circumstances that need to be just right in order to meet someone and fall in love with them. For example, when Ted and Robin first meet, even though they appear to be super compatible, the timing just wasn't there, and so their relationship doesn't work out. This is why Ted 
Ed tells his kids the story of all the things that shaped him into the person that he needed to be before he could be with their mother. Or their stepmother, but that's a different conversation. The point is, it's one of those journey, not the destination things. And Ted teaches his kids everything he learned during his crazy journey through life. This includes some heavier things, like when Marshall's dad passes away and the gang reflects on what it means to lose a loved one. Or the episode where Ted realizes that his friends are outgrowing him, which I actually did a whole video on that I'll leave linked in the description below. The show covers those heavier aspects of life, and I definitely appreciate that. But those are rare moments in the story. Really what I'm referring to here are the many rules and theories that Ted and the gang come up with to help them get through everyday life. Like Lily and Marshall's Olive Theory, which is based off the fact that Lily doesn't like olives, but Marshall does. And when Lily orders food that has olives, she can just give them to Marshall. So the Olive Theory is that a good couple has ways of balancing each other out. Or how about Barney's famous hot crazy scale, which is his way of determining whether or not a girl is worth taking out. In short, if someone is crazy, then they must be equally hot to make up for it. Or one of my favorites, Ted's Dobbler versus Dahmer theory, which states that there's a thin line between a charming romantic gesture and a creepy one. The theory being named after a charming movie character, Lloyd Dobbler, and the Netflix sensation and real life serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer. The show is littered with funny little theories, rules, and sayings like these, especially thanks to Barney, who's infamous for having a rule for everything, like the platinum rule. Basically, don't date anyone that you're forced to see on a regular basis. And not to mention the entirety of the bro code. Some of these are obviously more ridiculous than others, but I think people get a kick out of them because of how relatable they can be. Like the three day rule, for example, which is to wait three days after getting someone's number before calling them so as to not appear desperate. Or Barney's lemon law, which allows you to call off any date within the first five minutes if you can already tell that you're not a good match. I could go on because there's so many of these, but you get it by now. I'd even say that at times the show acts as a modern survival guide to dating in your early adult life. So how did this essential property translate to How I Met Your Father? Well, the show still is undoubtedly about modern dating. So that's a huge point in the show's favor. For example, there's a lot of talk about dating apps like Tinder, which obviously wasn't around during the time of How I Met Your Mother, but is an important part of the modern dating scene. And we do already have some life lessons that future Sophie is teaching her son. Like the episode where Sophie turns 30, and they talk about how being the same age as other people doesn't necessarily mean that you're at the same stage in life. We're the same age, but we're not at the same stage. And now I'm rhyming. As far as funny little rules or theories, there aren't really any that pop up. At least none that I noticed while watching through the first season. This could be due to the fact that they don't have an eccentric Barney type character to funnel these things through, or just that they simply wanted to move away from that type of thing, because yeah, there's not a lot of it. But like I said, I do still feel like the show is trying to capture the feeling of what it's like dating in the 2020s. So that, at the very least, feels very How I Met Your Mother to me. And that does it for the three essential properties of How I Met Your Mother that I wanted to cover in this video. I'm sure some people will feel like I missed some important elements here or there, or they'll feel like these things aren't actually that important to How I Met Your Mother, and that's to be expected. Just like with the ship of Theseus, there's no real science to something like this. You probably noticed that How I Met Your Father didn't score very well with any of the three properties that we talked about. The classic non-linear storytelling is hardly there, and there's almost no emphasis on perspective. The show does at least try to give us some fun lessons in modern dating, but I don't think it's anywhere near as good as what we got in the original. So now we can finally return to the question at hand. Is this how I met your mother. If I had to give a yes or no answer, I'm leaning towards no. It's more of an echo of How I Met Your Mother than a true continuation of its legacy. But in the show's defense, I almost feel like the fact that it is so different from the original is evidence that they were making a conscious effort to make this feel like its own thing. And while that may be hard for me to accept because I love How I Met Your Mother so much, I could respect that. But my problem with that is that they removed all of the unique elements of How I Met Your Mother and replaced them with nothing. Had there been something new and exciting in its place, I would have been more understanding of leaving some of the stuff behind, but that isn't the case. So what we're left with just feels like a watered down version of the original. I'd almost say the show feels more like a reboot of Friends than it does How I Met Your Mother. And that's not a knock on Friends, because I love that show too, it's just not as unique as How I Met Your Mother. I have a feeling some people are going to watch this video and think, why does How I Met Your Father even have to be like the original at all? Isn't it a good thing that it's unique from 
from How I Met Your Mother. And to that, I'd say yes. When you're doing a reboot, you definitely want to shake some things up. Like an all new cast, for example, great. Gender swap on the main character, love it. Not including a Barney archetype, because how could anyone ever live up to the legend of Barney Stinson? Did you guys just feel a chill? Hmm. Yeah. Daddy's home. Not only great, but necessary. But in my opinion, there is a threshold for how much you should change. And crossing that line isn't even a bad thing. All that would mean is that maybe what you're cooking up should just be a part of something new rather than an extension of something else. And that's why the focus of this video has been essential properties. In other words, the few things that you should not change if you're trying to keep the identity of the show alive. So in conclusion, I was disappointed with the How I Met Your Mother reboot. The show has a lot of problems that I'd be willing to excuse just based on how much I love the original. But the fact that it just doesn't feel like How I Met Your Mother is a non-starter. I don't know what they were trying to do with How I Met Your Father. Did they intentionally dumb it down from the original to maybe make it more approachable or something? Or did they just misunderstand what made the original so great in the first place? We may never know. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that the HelloFresh ad was pretty hard to watch. What's that? Mm, package from Hannah. Probably our Hello fresh meal for tonight. We do um, weekly FaceTime cooking dates to stay connected. I think tonight we're making baked cod. Thought we could spice things up tonight. Mmm, spice things up. What is this, a last minute switch to Thai? She is so bad. Thank you for watching and stay gold.